Controlled traffic farming is, in simple terms, driving your heavy vehicles on the same wheel tracks every time you're in the paddock. In Australia's southeastern grain growing region, controlled traffic farming has been widely adopted in high and medium rainfall zones, but not so much in low rainfall zones. Something the zone's regional cropping solutions network saw as an issue. And the question arose, well, is that an opportunity that low rainfall farmers were missing out on? Nigel Wilhelm, a senior scientist with SADI, specialises in sustainable farming systems, and as a result of the RCSN's deliberations, he was appointed lead scientist for a Grains Research and Development Corporation invested project to investigate controlled traffic farming in low rainfall zones. We surveyed the farmers at the start of the project, and I guess some of the answers we got back is, oh, it doesn't work with our big gear uh, our farms and soil types are too diverse to make it happen. Not all our paddocks are regular, so we can't drive in straight lines, so it's not going to work as well. And they're all factors, but they don't necessarily stop you using controlled traffic farming. Wade Nichols from South Australia's southeastern Mallee cautiously moved into controlled traffic 15 years ago and shares some of those reservations revealed by the survey. We'd like to get as far as we can with controlled traffic, but we're probably never going to get quite 100%. We do still do a lot of hay, and with our bigger machinery and stuff, it's hard to get everything to line up perfectly. Robert Pocock is a fifth-generation Mallee farmer, 20 kilometres northwest of Lamaru. Like Wade Nichols, he introduced controlled traffic over a number of years. We haven't been in a rush. Let's do it. Uh, it's got to fit with our cash flow, obviously, um, and that's been the I think that'll be the key to the success of controlled traffic is to not let it um, take over the bank account. Concerns such as these are real. However, controlled traffic farming, or CTF, can be partially adopted and slowly, according to Nigel Wilhelm. It is a system that you can implement incrementally and take your time at it. And also, I suppose we need to acknowledge that a lot of farmers are partially in controlled traffic now anyhow, with auto steer are tending to match boom spray and cedar wheat. So that, that starts confining the heavy trafficking to restricted parts of the paddock anyhow. On many farms, wheel tracks can cover between 40 to 70% of the paddock. So by driving on the same wheel tracks or tram lines, the trafficked area can be reduced down to 10 or 15%. To measure the impact of traffic on crop production, this research project took two approaches to field trials. One looked at how crop production was impacted by wheel traffic on commercial scale paddocks, and the other saw a series of farm plot trials established with and without wheel tracks. The idea behind that was if we could document how much crop production is affected by heavy trafficking, then the flip side of controlled traffic is that those penalties should be foregone or recovered in a controlled traffic farming system because you're not driving heavy vehicles on the cropped area anymore. At a commercial paddock scale, the crop production difference between trafficked and non-trafficked was 4%. What's the 4% mean? It means that if you move from the current system of a semi-controlled traffic to a full controlled traffic system, which means they reduce their footprint on the paddock by a half to two thirds, we'd expect overall they might get a 4% increase in crop production across their farm. What the research also said about the average of 4% movement in crop productivity in a low rainfall zone was that it could vary. On deep sandy soils, the expected benefit could be much higher. Down on the flats, that 4% might drop back to zero, according to Nigel Wilhelm. Does that mean controlled traffic farming is a waste of time? It still isn't, because there's still that operational side. There may be times when you can get on the paddock early because you've got compacted roadways, which means you might get better weed control or you might be able to harvest the crop before another rainfall event damages it. Those sort of occasional things can happen because you've got that set up in place. Wade Nichols will take the small benefits because multiplied across a big area, they become significant savings. Just being able to get back on your tracks after rainfall events or... Um, you know, quicker than usual, small, small gains in using a little bit less fuel. I mean, it's all good for us. It's our cost savings that we can, you know, over a big program can actually add up to a substantial amount at the end of the day. Small gains, such as a 4% lift in crop production, were a consistent finding for the research team. 
In low rainfall zones, benefits from CTF were similar to those in medium and high rainfall zones, only smaller. That's partly because crop production levels are a lot lower, so the returns per hectare tend to be lower. What the project's grower survey also identified is that there's a difference in what is understood by controlled traffic farming. There's certainly people who believe controlled traffic farming is about bare wheel tracks. Unless you've got bare wheel tracks, you're not fully controlled traffic. That's not the definition we use. We're quite happy to have, and in the low rainfall farming environment, we'd expect you to have sown wheel tracks because erosion is certainly an issue on those wheel tracks. And that does undermine some of the benefits of control traffic because you are cultivating those ro roadways which you're trying to compact for fuel efficiency issues. But that's a compromise we need to accept in low rainfall in farming environments. Erosion of tram lines is a challenge Robert Pocock has faced. Um, on the sandy soils, you know, the wind loves to get into it. And if we're lucky enough to get a good rain and the storm, you know, water can get into them a bit as well. And like many in the Mallee low rainfall zone, their farming business is a mixed enterprise, growing legume pastures and lucian hay for livestock, a farming system seen as unsuitable for the adoption of controlled traffic. You know, we're cutting hay on an angle to the way it's sown. Um, you know, hay balers are coming in, their contractors said, you know, there's no way of having that fit on a tram lawn. Moving hay out the paddock, it's got to be done efficiently. You know, it, it's quite challenging. What Nigel Wilhelm wants growers to consider is that in a low rainfall zone, modifying their approach to a controlled traffic farming system is okay. So another compromise that farmers will face when they're in control traffic is the issue of growing hay. Increasingly handy option when you're managing grassy weeds, etc. If you want to cross sow that to get a better head of row standing up for, for hay, again, that's not something you should be doing in a controlled traffic or it's an exception you might have to make. It's another compromise. Perhaps the biggest compromise of all is how to look at upgrading machinery, a cost many farmers saw as a deal breaker. I guess our response is that's not the model we have in mind. It's not going out and buying a new suite of machinery that matches axle widths and swath widths. It's taken incrementally and every time you change your machinery, which you're going to do anyhow, then you change it to a a setup which will fit into a controlled traffic system. An example with um, some of the modifications we've made and how we've got into controlled traffic have been, um, yeah, changing axles on chaser bins and just lining, you know, machinery widths up as we've gone. Um, obviously, cotton reels on tractors, just an easy, quick way to, to take the take the wheels out where we need to be, bring the back wheels out as well. The reason the controlled traffic farming in low rainfall zones project was initiated in 2014 was to answer the question, was this an opportunity growers were missing out on? When the project was brought to a close midway through 2019, another grower survey was conducted. The findings from that survey is that there's a lot of interest, a lot of awareness now of a controlled traffic, and a lot of the farmers who responded sort of were confident they knew more about controlled traffic farming than they did previously and felt they were in a position to make a decision about it. And that decision might be, it's not for me, at least it's a better informed one, according to the survey. So we're quite pleased to hear those results. Although the research targeted southeastern Australia, the findings will have application in other low rainfall zones where soil types are similar. And a user guide has been produced. So it's going to capture the findings from the project. It'll be a place that farmers and advisors can go to and say, well, what are the pros and cons? What, how, how have other, there's eight or 10 case studies in that of farmers that have put it in place and what their experiences are. And there's some guidelines about if you were to go control traffic farming, one of the major principles you want to keep in mind as you implement across that farm business.